Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. If you're wondering that you want to grow your YouTube channel and YouTube and you watch this kind of top level of YouTubers, they're using very high quality clickbait YouTube thumbnails for videos and they're getting so much views and also driving audience to their video. So if you're wondering how you can also achieve this kind of thumbnails, in this video, I'm going to show all of the process. I'm going to show you all of the process step by step so that if you are a beginner or intermediate, you can just follow my steps and create those kind of high quality YouTube thumbnails for your work. Now, before starting the video we must need have some elements for our thumbnails first we need our image second we need some backgrounds and elements that we're going to use and also third things that is text effect so we're going to create all of the things step by step so without talking too much let's start the video now we are here in photoshop and we have already opened our photoshop software for that if you don't have photoshop you can use the photopia which is our free software which is version of online it's do the same thing as like photoshop for first we're going to go to the file new and here as we always like to do i like to go with the full size a lot of people like to go with the sd version but for my preference i always like to go with the full sd for that resolution should be around 72 and give all the color mode and everything like it is what it is and then create now first we're going to use our images and also create the background to do that just like me for first i'm going to use this photo and just open it and photoshop now we need to be remove the background and do all the editing of our photos. To do that, just go to the uh, selection tool and quick selection. And here, I'm not going to use the quick selection tool. I'm going to directly use the selection mask. However, click over here. And if you don't find that over here, just go to the select. And there you can see this is the option and select it. Now, next step we're going to do, I'll just make a selection. To do that in a one click, select the subject. Now Photoshop will going to do all the work and it will make a selection as perfect as possible. Our step is to just make sure that everything edit is perfectly okay. For me, I'm really happy with that. There's some area should be correct. To do that, I'm going to take the brush tool. If I click and drag with the plus, you can see it is adding. And if I press Alt or Option in my keyboard and then I press it, if I press, you can see it's adding or just removing that part the red part will going to remove our background this is the background will be removed now our job is to make sure everything is okay and this part is to be okay also let's keep it how it is and now we can see we just make the selection i think it's perfectly okay we can do a lot of adjustment in the next part for like uh for the now just i'm happy with that go to this output setting over here should be output setting to the layer mask and hit okay now it's perfectly all right next step we're going to create a background to do that just make sure we want to see that everything is perfectly okay or not to do that just select go to the adjustment layer over here and take a solid color keep the white hit okay Take this layer into the back area. Now, if I zoom closer, you can see some of the parts. It should be removed. There is some halos or what we call the edges is been here. And also there is some part is need to be perfect. To do that for a very simple and quick way, select that layer mask, not the image. This layer mask you can see, and then go to the filter, others. And here you can use that minimum. Here, I'm going to use only the version. Don't go with the too much because it will cut off a lot of area. We don't want that. We don't want to keep that as much as possible. We want to remove. Uh, just make sure and see which is perfectly okay. Make sure also the preserved to square is keep that roundness. So it's going to make that rounding corner more smoother. For now, I'll increase that a little bit. And I think 1.5 is perfectly okay for me and hit OK. Now you can see the halos over the side is removed. Next step, we need to be do some of the adjustment with that hair part. As you can see, there's some halos. So now take that smudge tool, go, it will going to be hide under that. Just click and press, then take that smudge tool and click it and just keep it. Now take this and click and drag to the downside. Make sure that layer mask is selected then just click and drag. Now I think this is perfectly all right. 
Next step is to make some editing with the face features. It's very simple. Just take select this layer, not the layer mask, and then take that spot rule and remove the spot some of the from the some of the parts. And now here I'm going to edit on my face as like Mr. Beast. If you see his thumbnail, he he's using so much polish and also like so much highlighted over his face so i'm going to do the same thing with my face to do that first i'm going to just make sure that color is okay uh then just i'm going to take the brush tool create a simple blank layer over here then press the right button on your mouse and con create a clipping mask select this one take the brush tool and also make sure the opacity under five percent around five to six percent is okay then click and just make a sample Press Alt on, on your keyboard and then click and if you're using Mac you need to press Option. Then just click and drag and just make a little bit subtle changes with the face. And I think it's okay. Next step we're going to make our image a li little bit smoother like as like Mr. Beast. To do that first we need to just of that layer by clicking over here then press shift ctrl alt e on your keyboard then just make a duplicate layer and then invert that layer just to do that go to image adjustment over here you can see you can press that ctrl i on your keyboard and invert it then change the blending mode into vivid light and then go to the filter others and high pass here we're going to make sure that everything is perfectly okay don't go with too much don't go with less a little bit like this one i think it's perfectly okay then hit okay then create a layer mask and now we're going to again invert that layer mask to do that press ctrl i now you can see it's removed then take the brush tool make sure the foreground color is white opacity around 50 percent and then apply that smoothness and that is okay next we're going to take another adjustment layer it's called curve take it and just increase the size a little bit over here this part is called highlight and this is a darker part and that is okay also we can just make sure one true just don't want that much yellow in our face Take the blue and I think it's perfectly okay. Next we're going to apply camera filter in our face. To do that just shift ctrl alt e you can use that shortcut key or then or you can in a very simple way because it's a very very beginner friendly tutorial I'm going to select all of those press right button on mouse and convert it. Then go to the filter and camera filter. I think it's perfectly okay for us and we're good to go. I think it's too much bright. You can adjust it in that feature. Now take that image and paste it over here. Press right button on your mouse and just reduce the size of that image. And I think it's okay. Now next step is to create our background. To do that, first we're going to take an image from the Google. Let's go to the Google. Now we're here in a Google, now we're going to search for like a background and just take any kind of background you like. For me, I'm going to choose from that. For me, I'm happy with this one. Uh, I think it's not free version. We need to have and I think this is perfectly okay. Mm, and just I'm going to save this image or just copy it. Then take that and make it a little bit bigger over here. And this is okay. We just want to do that. And then we're going to apply like blur over that image with the filter blur apply Gaussian blur a little bit higher then again go to the adjustment layer take solid color over the time now we're going to apply a little bit bluish color and then we're going to change our blending mode into multiply and for here we can increase the color of the dye 
Next, we're going to use our graphics pack that I'm using. If you want to download that graphics pack, you can just check the link in the description. Now here, I'm going to apply that from the extra. I need to be found out some of that. There's a lot of things I can use. I'm going to use that grid. Let's take this one. And here, then change the blending mode into overlay. And now if I take our image, I think it's a little bit brighter, but we can adjust it in future. So I think this is okay right now. Next, we're going to give another color over that because it's a little bit darker part. Create a blank layer over here. Then take the brush tool, increase the size, take that same color and apply it. And this is okay. Next step is to our create our gluing effect into with the model. To do that, create another blank layer over here, then fill it with the black color. To do that, go to the edit, fill, here we can select that black and hit OK. Then change the blending mode into screen and create another blank layer. And now press the right button on your mouse and create a clipping mask. Then again go to the adjustment layer and take that gradient map. Here we need to be create a clipping mask over that using this one. So click here, then change that color. This side should be black and this side should be color. Now click here and take the black color and here take a white color and over here just click and take a very bright color of blue and hit ok now hit ok over here now take this one just select this one take the brush tool be sure that you choose a white color opacity around 100 percent and click Now this is okay with our background. Next, we're going to make another duplicate layer over this layer. Select this all, then press Alt or Option on your keyboard. Take this into the front part. Now delete this one, and then create another blank layer. Take the brush tool. Now this time, in decrease the size of the brush, increase the opacity around 50%. Apply that into this part, this side side of that image okay now take that smudge tool and i will do the same thing as like me and just apply that color i just adjust it properly Now I just apply that uh, our color over the side. Now I think this side part is need to be adjusted. So do that. Just to take the brush tool, make sure I apply uh, just layer mask, and then take the black color and remove that. And I think uh, this is now okay. I don't know, just want to make sure that opa, change the blending mode in the screen. I think color dodge is perfectly looking okay. Next step, we're going to apply our text into the thumbnail. Just apply first, change that color into white. Select this and change that font into... Then take that and make it bigger. And press Ctrl and then just a little bit slide over here. And now we're going to apply our text effect over here. First select this one, press double click over here, you can find that layer style option. You can also go to that FX icon and blending option. And that is fine. Then again, select this one thumbnail 
then double click I think this is perfectly okay. We want to just reduce the size of the gap of that stroke, like a little bit minus 25 and also a little bit better. This is okay. Then again, do the same thing for this one. Press the right button mouse, copy layer style and select this one and paste it. Paste that layer style. Now it's applying the same. We're going to make some adjustment. We can use uh, another color. Press over the gradient. And that is perfectly okay for that text effect. Next, we're going to apply some of the elements into our thumbnail. To do that, I'm going to use our graphics pack. Just press Ctrl T and then make it bigger. And take this one into the back side over here. Then select this one and take just Q saturation. Press that clipping mask option here. Then change that color into like a blue. And I think it's okay. Then select this one and press that into convert that into smart object, filter, blur, and apply more Gaussian blur. Not too much, I don't want that very much. A little bit. That is fine. Then we can use a lot of other graphics and just make it a little bit bigger. Again, go to that and take the hue saturation, create a clipping mask. Now select this one. Now you can use another graphics pack. Let's see. That I'm going to decrease the opacity a little bit. And I think this is finally okay. Now we can, we can use a lot of PNG elements over here. Now select all those and just take them into the back part, back of the area, then apply motion blur. And there we go, you can see we're all mostly done. Next, we're going to do the final effect by using our camera filter. Just select this one, press Shift, Ctrl, Alt, E to create a snapshot, and then press right button mouse and convert to smart object. Then again, go to the filter, camera filter. My camera filter is a very experimental thing and you can just do all kind of experiment over here. Take the basic and just do all the editing and I try to do whatever you like. Now here, try to do whatever you like and apply all the colors and see which is good for your thumbnail. And finally, now you can see we're done. Now for final, just select all the layer and create a group to just organize all the layers. And then we are already done. Now I hope that you learned a lot of things. I just wanted to show you all the process, just basic process that what I actually do when it's come to creating thumbnails. And I also do that same process for my clients and also other things that whatever I try to create thumbnails. So I hope that you like this video. If you like this video, hit that like button and also be sure to subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends. And if you have any kind of question, you can ask me in the comments below or you can also go to my Instagram and just check them out. And if you can just ask anything and I also try to solve all of the questions if you ask me on the comment section below because I will try to. Otherwise, you can also contact me on Instagram. That's be easy. So that's it for today. See you in my next video. Till then. Bye. -bye.